Kyushu had so far seen the lion's share of the fighting, but only modest territorial gains had been made by the invaders. Finally, the fall of the Nabeshima to Josartan's army and a breakthrough against the Sacho made by George Hook promised to bring some reward for all the effort. With help from newer officers Tadakuni Jervis and Tananao Broadhurst, the British advanced on all fronts. In Honshu, the treacherous Okayama clan was destroyed by John Alcock, while his son mysteriously disappeared while en route to a British training camp. It has been a true delight to hear from you all, more than I can possibly express through mere ink. As you requested, I believe I shall return to visit you soon. However, I have been lucky enough to fall on my feet here. The army allowed me to formally inherit father's rank, and so now I find myself leading several companies of men in search of Japanese fortifications to capture. A brief review of the modern military manuals was all it took to catch up on just how we should go about that. Marvelous thing this army we've got, I must say. Aside from the marching and shouting, I have taken to collecting an assortment of samples of tea, which is consumed here with less regularity than you would want, but with a great deal of pomp. They practice these fascinating ceremonies with the liquid, and drink it not as mere slaking beverage, but as a sort of blank canvas in which all the complexities of the universe are espoused yet controlled. Getting thirsty just thinking about it. It's time for more honourable gentlemen. We're starting with a look to northern Kyushu, where our vassal, the Fukuyama, fell to rebels for the second time, and now we've just taken their territory. They really didn't want to be ruled by the Fukuyama. We'll see how they do being ruled by us instead. The Awaji attacked again on the front line, but we had three stacks of troops, so we just easily repelled them. And now John Alcock will be preparing to move out himself and go on the offensive. Nearby, the situation is a little bit more dangerous. We've got Dorian trying to take one of our castles back and so far being dissuaded by the size of the enemy army in the area. And Charles has landed behind enemy lines and will, at least at first, have an easy job. We can just storm this enemy castle and overwhelm them with our massive army of conscripts. And in we go, catching a level up on the way as well. He's probably one of the leading officers, if not the leading officer in the army in terms of actual rank in the game. Now in eastern Kyushu, we've advanced up with Tananao as we saw earlier to take some territory and we can just keep going. Public order is usually very good because we have the constitutional monarchy tech and the Japanese actually quite like the idea of how the British government works I suppose so they don't really mind being occupied by our forces. In southwest Kyushu, Joss Arten is sailing in with a fleet to bypass the advancing front lines and just land right at the back of the enemy's territory to do some damage himself. First I use some guns here to blow up this port, that will allow me to land a quick disembark army here, but it actually doesn't disembark the army, not sure how that's supposed to work. We can force landings though, it uses up our turn, and next turn we'll be able to go on the offensive against the lightly guarded nearby castles, and hopefully that will have a very crippling effect on the Sacho. On the front line, we're still going to attack though, because old Jervis here wants to get a bit of action for himself. We move up with an army that's got lots of elite units and lots of bad units, and we face an army that's got lots of middling units, and it all ends up as a balanced engagement by the looks of things, and a straight up line battle in terms of what the tactics are going to be. We square off in front of each other, I say square off, we're at an angle to the enemy, or they're at an angle to us, they formed up diagonally with their right flank in between these two small lakes, quite well protected there. They've also got their static defences in front of some of their army. It was on this right flank where the fighting started, some of their men started engaging with my guards I believe, 
and it wasn't the best situation because a couple of their units were firing at just one of mine and the guards started taking casualties, so I had to now advance the whole line forward to try and escalate the battle so that the rest of our line would be usable. My line is alternating elite bad, elite bad going along, so hopefully the elite units will inspire the inferior ones and provide that supporting fire that should allow us to have a roughly equal time across the front line. So now with everything moved up, we can go back to the shooting and things will go a bit better. The enemy also started bringing more units forwards and most importantly onto our side of their static defences, that's what we like to see. Here we get a case where they're climbing on top of the second line of static defences, which probably means our shots can go over the top of the first line and still hit some of these men, so that's nice. Over on the left, things are a bit more open, we're not really engaging the enemy properly, but we're going to try and rectify that as soon as possible. As for my cavalry, I sent a load of them around the lake in order to attack the enemy flank, and because they were distracted, this attack was quite successful. We'll be doing another flank attack on the other side, and apart from that, we're just going to stand here, shoot as much as we can, and hope that that either kills all the enemies or scares them off. Runner! Where's that hairy little runner got off to? I'm right here, Major, sir. Under the horse. What the blazes are you doing down there? You told me to sit down here in case you needed me, sir. Did I? Ha! <laughs> Such genius! Come on then, let's swap. Swap, sir? Up you get! You take the horse, I've got a message for you to run! Understood, sir. What shall it be? I want you to get the boys a little more fired up! Push them forward and get this thing bloody started! We can shoot at each other all day, but that's not a real fight, is it? Perhaps not, sir. What should I say, exactly? Tell them that if the enemy are to know how damned naughty they've been, they've got to see you eye to eye when you thrust your blade into their belly, smash them across the face with your rifle, and collect your hard-earned spine! Spine, sir? Forget it! I'm getting on with you! Ride up! I'll sort the men out myself! Leading by example, this is called... CHARGE! Sir, you don't have a weapon! I am the weapon! Forward! Here's the end result, the usual couple of hundred losses, enemy army totally wiped out sort of affair, although we did take a particularly high number of casualties on some of our more elite units, so that's a shame. Terakuni levels up and now can continue on to attack the nearby castle. Only a small garrison and those men nearby weren't close enough to reinforce, so we'll just bust on in here and occupy the place, allowing us to now replenish and perhaps get ready to fight soon again. After that, we learn that we are now the Regents of Japan, or at least Major General John Alcock is, I suppose. Our fame level has become so high that the Japanese Emperor has actually given us control of the nation. That doesn't mean much, since not only does the nation not necessarily respect the authority of the Emperor, but they don't respect our authority. But that's a nice symbolic victory to have, I think. Tananao can just continue moving down the east side of Kyushu with no real resistance, just overcoming garrisons one at a time, so there's another one. May need to wait around and replenish a little bit, but nothing serious happening there. As for Joss Archon, he needs to auto-resolve the garrison that he landed next to in the previous turn, and that again won't be an issue for him. In this case, I realised we can actually move out right away and go after the next castle, Kagoshima, which is the capital of the Sacho Alliance. I'm not going to attack right away, because the enemies inside are a bit stronger than many of the opponents we've seen recently, so I'll just leave them to it with a siege and see what happens there. I may need to actually go back to control public order, so we don't want to be too hasty. John Alcock is going to continue marching east, now against the Oweji, we push one of their armies back, and now we're going to besiege it in a castle. It's got a tiny advantage on its own, but our reinforcements are nearby, so if it sallies it will have a difficult time, and so will it if it doesn't, so that's all looking good. Now Charles needs to start moving back towards Dorian to <laughs> prove that he's done something particularly useful by going behind enemy lines and then resolving the situation with the Tatori. Step 1 is just capturing this castle, using a night attack to avoid having to fight the few units outside to make that nice and easy. 
and now with that captured we can just attack that army outside, although in this case it runs away, the correct thing to do. I won't bother pursuing because we need to hang around and control public order and perhaps take a bit of replenishment as well, but soon we'll be able to push west and go see how Dorian's doing and perhaps embarrass him with our high quality tactics. Now at sea there was a brief battle because we encountered an enemy frigate for the first time with one of our own raiding our trade lines. Luckily we have explosive shot, that means with two roughly equal ships we'll win because the explosive shot will start fires that just cripples the other ship before it does much damage to us and then we just let the fire do the work, it causes the enemy to surrender and really we didn't have to fight them very much at all so that went well, that's a bit more income we'll be getting from trade as a result of that victory. The Sacho at Kagoshima decide to sally out against Joss, not quite sure why. They now have less power on the balance bar, because the balance bar does take the defender's advantage in a castle into account. So for this case I'll just use an order to resolve since that battle would be extremely easy. And there we go. We didn't completely destroy them so we don't take the castle right away, but we'll have it next turn for sure. Now a Tatori stack appears from the Fog of War to besiege Charles. The castle is in bad condition after the auto resolve we used to take it, so the gates will be open, but the enemy force isn't particularly well composed for a siege attack. It's got a lot of cavalry who won't take part in the first wave attack. So all we need to do is the usual, we'll just set up around the place and shoot the enemy once they come inside the castle. And the fact that the gates are destroyed somewhat helps us because we know where the enemy will go. The AI will try to just run through the gates because it's faster than climbing the walls, but it means there's only a few places they can enter the castle, so we just set up all of our guns there and start shooting. Their Spear Samurai will have the best chance to break through here, but I'm distracting them with the Spear Levy so that we can get some time to just shoot them, and that should work fine. The enemy were taking cover in my gatehouse, so their attack coming from the south was particularly slow, and neither side was really killing each other because of the cover that provided, but their attack from the north was wiped out very quickly, and really all we need to do now is wait for us to win with perhaps a little bit of micro just to really optimize our kill zones. I'm still trying to wrap my head around what all this means. Hear me out and see if this makes any sense to any of you. We've got the Emperor, the Imperial Family, which is in essence the monarchy that rules the islands, traditionally. Then we've got this group called the Shogunate, who run the military, but they deal with all the day-to-day -day matters and such, and perhaps even deal with everything, as it might happen to be. So this letter, this announcement that I have been made the Imperial Regent is very roughly equivalent to saying I've been made King, but that Parliament wants me dead. Something like that. There was something about a Baka Taka Council that Charles told me about, but well of course I can't bloody well ask him, can I? Do you know Dorian just flat out refused to answer my questions in his previous letter? I think Charles is up to something, and if he strikes gold, Dorian will swoop in and say it was his order. Either way, I'm going to strangle him in front of this damned Emperor if he's let a single scratch get on my boy. Anyway, off topic I know. I'm King of Japan, and... any objections? The final result is that our losses were irrelevant and the enemy's losses were complete. So that went exactly as we would want it to. Now they're going to bomb some of my coastal provinces. This happens constantly from pretty much every clan that has ships, but I'm not really covering it in this series because it's just never ending. Now though there was a bit of action, the Tutori that Dorian had under siege decide to sally and this balance bar is very good because the enemy force has been whittled down by the rigors of the siege so they're at reduced strength and our reinforcements can come into play as well a little bit, so we just destroyed them with ease. There's still another Tutori army nearby to deal with so hopefully Charles will be able to step in here and claim that he is the real hero. I'm going to move on to this bridge to trap the Tatori between him and Dorian. This is a bit dangerous because it means the Tatori could easily attack these two castles we've taken here from the east and there's already a small force nearby that might be able to do that right now. We're just going to ignore that threat and see what happens of course. 
As for John Alcock, the enemy didn't sally against his siege here, so I'm just going to gang up with all of our reinforcements and force this castle open with sheer numbers, and that battle goes fine. We even got a heroic victory from the Auto Resolve, so we'll make that capture. That's our front line advanced, but we can actually do more because the reserves can go and take this other nearby castle just to make sure our lines are secure with one and a half stacks of troops. That's no problem at all, so we'll just make that easy Auto Resolve. The Awaji have more territory over on Shikoku and Awaji Island specifically, but we'll be able to use ships later to block them off, so the front line will actually become easier to deal with in that region soon. Tananao, as you can see, continued his advance through Kyushu, steamrolling another castle and capturing it without any trouble. George Hook got back in on the action when a Sacho force was trying to walk north up the western edge of Kyushu, but because we'd left him behind, he can easily deal with that. And Joss, of course, needs to finish off the survivors from the Sacho sally against him. He does so and takes the Sacho capital of Kagoshima, a nice, highly built-up province that we'll be able to use for our own purposes. Moving on to the next turn, the Tatori army does attack one of these lightly defended castles. Although that said, the attack they're coming in with is light in itself, so there's not exactly a big threat. We can use the normal strategy of just shooting them once they get into the castle. I'm actually doing a little bit of shooting before the enemy start their climb because I realized the way the AI scripting works is that once the men get close enough to the wall, the AI will give them the climb order, and then if you start shooting them, they won't stop and fire back, so you don't have the problem where it's not actually that easy to win shooting matches even from the wall. So in this case, you can see I'm moving up men after they've obviously been given the climb order, they're just walking into the position they need to make that climb and taking losses to our gunfire. The losses were very slow because our men aren't very good, but we had enough time to get them all and really no progress was made by the enemies as they tried to get in. We did actually lose our captain in the fight because I was using the Spear Levy who he was among to block enemies and probably taking loads of friendly fire as well but it doesn't matter because all of the units were garrisoned you just get them back immediately and that's the end of that so we lost really nothing at all and the enemy lost a few units so that all turned out good. Now back to Kyushu, we've got another turn, so the steamrolling will continue. The Sacho are very nearly defeated and without an army to their name, there's not much they're going to be able to do to stop us from this point. That mad brute, he's done it again! Taken alongside what Broadhurst gone native has been up to, it looks like having the insider angle is enough to grease the wheels of progress nicely. I'll be left floundering at this rate. That cheeky Mr. Artin has the right idea. I should sail to the other end of the country and conquer my way back. Or even better, send the mad Major Jervis to do it for me. Yes, just as all of our achievements will end up in the Major General's memoirs, I shall have my own subordinates make themselves useful for me. Should free up some time to look into what we can do with this island. If Emperor Alcock is going to the capital, and Artin sails off on another jaunt with his barnacle buddies, then the civilization of Kyushu will be my very own niche market. Rather than continuing on to the east, I decided to detour north with John Alcock. I'll leave his reserves behind to hold the front line, go to sneak up and see if he can't find out what Charles is really up to. Charles is actually going to have to go towards him because my original target, the Tatori army, has moved off to the west, so now Dorian will have to deal with that. And I thought Charles might as well just quickly secure this nearby castle before it builds up a new army. So there we go, an easy auto resolve, and that's another capture. Our front line is still very tenuous up here, but it may hold if the Tatori don't have anything to challenge it. As for their main force, Dorian will just quickly go out, as I said, and take it down. It's a whole load of line infantry, and we've got a whole load of line infantry, but ours is better, so all we need here is a shootout. They've put down some static defences in between us, they put them down, then ran back and started coming back towards them as the fight started, but really, they're just going to be in the way of both sides as we begin shooting. So this means the shootout will progress at a decelerated rate. You can see all of the little bits of smoke as the bullets are hitting these piles of dirt. So 
Slower killing rates for both sides most likely, it probably benefits the enemy a bit more because they're closer to it and are more able to shoot over it, but still with our gunners being better and us rapidly having more gunners because of the enemy's early losses, we're just going to stay right where we are and not do anything, play this the lazy way. I did move up some Dragoons to attack the enemy on their left flank, you can see they were also coming over to our side of the defences which made things a bit easier, and eventually we win the battle. They did have a couple of melee units that never really got to do anything because we never got close to them and they just ran off at the end. A decisive victory, so another big army removed from play and the losses we took will be irrelevant once we've replenished them which we will surely have the chance to do since there's nothing likely to get this deep into our territory anytime soon. Back in Kyushu, everything's ganging up to now lay the final blows on the Sacho, Joss, Tananao and Tadakuni, all collecting up to attack this castle, pushing away the nearby Sacho forces, and now the castle will fall to a super easy auto resolve with them having no strength at all on that balance bar. John's plan to move north is interfered with by the arrival of a new enemy army. The Yodo are presenting themselves against us for the first time with a special composition. Loads of Tetsubo ninjas, they've got loads of guard cavalry and guard infantry, so heavy lancers and decent line infantry there. I'm going to do absolutely nothing in response to this because I think John might be able to ambush them, so I just sat there with my reserves staying on the defence in case he got bypassed. The Sacho threw away most of their last remaining forces, as you can see there, so that was no problem at all. And we're going to see something a bit similar from the Totori, just bringing an army up to attack Charles, but the army's not big enough to do anything, so we just win. I think the AI seems to be lacking some sort of feasibility checking in its decision making there. So another win, and our newly acquired territory successfully defended. Now it's our turn once again, and we really can finish off the Sacho for good. We have a combination team there of Tananao and Tadakuni taking one castle. I'm going to leave Tananao around to act as a garrison while Tadakuni Jervis pushes on for the final Sacho settlement. Nothing inside, just their respawning daimyo and a couple of garrison units. With these captures, we're gaining quite a few useful ports and economic areas that we can use to move these armies elsewhere if we need to. There's the confirmation that the Sacho are gone, a major faction taken down, just what we like to see, and Kyushu is now secured. So we can use this little break we've got to reorganise our forces if we need to and start planning our next moves. I sent Dorian over to the area Charles conquered to look for him, but of course he's not there anymore. He will instead be finding the Totori look like they're going for a counter-attack. That is easily repulsed and now I can actually hide his force on the main road, just in case they try again, so that will keep these new gains secure for now. The Yodo clearly bypassed John Alcock's ambush and now they are threatening to attack our nearby castles. The question is, do we need to send John and the main force back to stop them? And I'm going to say no to that in this case because we do have substantial numbers of reserves in the area plus castle garrisons and these new toys, four sets of howitzers. We've had some shipments in. We're now able to recruit artillery units or usable artillery units so that should help out once we can get them into action. So I'm going to stack up right in front of the Yodo, make sure the nearby castle has loads of stuff defending it and then just see how they react to that situation. This means that John can use his freedom to continue on to the north. We find another Yodo castle, only very lightly defended, so we'll just move on in and take that. This actually puts him pretty close to Charles now. These two regions that they've just taken recently, I think, sort of border each other. We see for a moment, as I vassalize this place, that there is a Yodo force hidden in the forest nearby. We can just go around the other side of the castle. I sent these police into the forest, but they didn't get ambushed or see the enemy, so not sh really sure what's going on there. Charles is going to advance forwards with his main force up to the crossroads just in front of John now. There are lots of undefended castles right in front of us, so lots of potential to continue our advance in that area. The Totori, who Dorian had forced to retreat, come back to indeed fight. We didn't get the ambush we were hoping for, but still an easy auto resolve. Again, seeming like the AI is just being desperate and deliberately starting battles it can't win for some reason, which makes our life easier, I suppose. 
Now for the Yodo turn, those hidden forces do reappear and run away somewhere, then their main attacking group bypasses my defences and goes for the reinforcing howitzers. They're able to run away and then they turn back to go and stand next to our armies without actually fighting them right now. We also see additional enemies from the Wakayama clan coming in from the east. There are now like three stacks of troops combined attacking in that particular area, so not having John there might prove to be a mistake. But with the arrival of our new artillery pieces, maybe we can make easy work of them. That is it for this episode, thank you very much for watching and special thanks to the officially Devon patrons. We'll see our first use of our new explosive friends and while we mostly sit around on Kyushu, I'm going to send Joss Arten out for a bit of a personal challenge on the next episode of Honourable Gentlemen. <laughs>